My name is Alex Olafsi Kolawale, and this is Pensu and the Razor Channel, also known as Bet Shama Espanol. I want to talk about malaria it's every year. Now, April 25th to 27th, I will set aside as World Malaria Day. The question that is bothering my mind is are we really winning war? How far have we gone? What can we do to stem the tide of malaria in Nigeria, in Africa, and in our world? The team for 2022 World Malaria Day is a next innovations to reduce malaria body and save lives. This team is helped. Looking at the recent events in our world, especially as our world is just coming out of pandemic, the pandemic of COVID-19 that started December 2019. Last year it was zero malaria. They are targeting next uh, 2030. And the, 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 the project is all about the reduction of malaria cases, deaths, by 90% in the year 2030. So this was launched in May 2015, after the World Health Assembly. Nigeria, are we ready? In 2020, it is estimated that about 241 million new cases of malaria were discovered. 627,000 malaria-related deaths in 85 countries. Are we close to eradicating malaria for real? Why some countries, even in Africa, like Algeria, Morocco, and some other countries, have been certified malaria free? According to WHO, the same cannot be said of Nigeria and the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has contributed 40%. Global malaria body, 40%. DRC, that is Democratic Republic of Congo and Nigeria. What should we be doing? What have we done? What are we doing right? What are we not doing right? What should we be looking at? What innovations are you are we bringing in place to eradicate malaria for good? to reduce malaria burden in Nigeria, especially, I'm so much particular about Nigeria. What, we are away. What system do we have, or have we put in place to, to eradicate malaria? Do we have a target maybe short-term, medium-term, or long-term targets. Are we looking at maybe in the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years? And we want to achieve what Morocco and Nigeria have achieved. You know, is it possible to follow in the full step of China that have not reported any case of malaria? But let's look at Africa. Do we have any program in place? We have data. We have method of reporting malaria cases. What about our diagnostic procedure? Are they enough? Do we have any? Thanks, all thanks to Clinton Health Access Initiative that have been at the forefront of uh, training pharmacists and non pharmacists in uh, PPMVs and identifying malaria in reporting and so on and so forth. But the program has stalled the advent of COVID-19. Only recently, uh, people told me that they started reporting again. They started reporting. But for two years, it has almost stalled. The, the gains 
that we have made in the world against malaria have come down to zero. We have seen an astronomical rise in incidences of malaria and malaria-related deaths in more countries. What are we doing in Nigeria? What is our government, our policy maker doing to curtail malaria? We have heard of a long-lasting insecticide treated net, you know, indoor residual spray, and so on and so forth. It is time for us to look at our policies, look at what we can do to really end malaria for good in Nigeria. The innovations. We've also seen the innovation, another innovation in the vaccine. And some partners have de developed three T S S C or something like that. That that the baby continues to take for each age, age five months. You take this for like five doses. You know they have they have tried it in Kenya, Ghana, and one other country. Three country has been used as a pilot. You know, in the pilot phase. So the world is awaiting the, the, the deployment of such vaccine and to know the efficacy of it. I was left wondering why our world was very, very quick in developing vaccines for COVID. That is Wuhan virus, coronavirus disease. Whereas for drug in, in the case of malaria, it is estimated that malaria kills more than COVID-19. Now uh, life has returned to normal. People have returned to their normal life. Most people have forgotten about the COVID-19 protocols, but malaria continue to be endemic in some areas and remain a major childhood killer disease. Killing as much as over 600,000 per year. How many deaths is being recorded all over the world during the, during the COVID-19 pandemic? We are talking about 87 countries now, this may be more. And this is just about, it may be more than that. I'm talking about malaria related deaths. So, I think this is the time for our world, the policy makers, everybody to put their resources together to develop vaccines, you know, very, very soon. That will be accessible. Vaccines for pregnant women and elderly and children. Not only that, another innovation is the genetically modi uh, modified mosquitoes. Whereas that is ongoing in the United States of America. We don't know the, what the outcome will be. And so on and so forth. This time to come out of the world. This time to harness innovations. Innovations. It is time to come out of artemisinin combination therapy alone. You know. com companies should begin to develop drugs that are not artemisinin based. Some people have phobia or they don't like to take the metal infantry because of the odor. Give them, I don't like it. So, how do you want those guys to treat their malaria when they have malaria? Now, another area we should look at critically is the area of diagnosis. The diagnostic equipment to test for malaria parasites are still expensive, and one of the one of the aim of WHO in the WHA assembly, that's what the assembly 
recently 72.6 uh, resolution is that the treatment, the diagnosis, the prevention and everything should not put a financial burden on the patient or on anybody. They should be, they should be affordable. The self-testing malaria kit should be available and pocket friendly. Do I need to use the word cheap? It needs to be pocket friendly. People should be able to walk to pharmacies, to medicine vendors shop, to anywhere and get malaria testing kit like we have in you know for other ailment like hepatitis, HIV and so on and so forth. Malaria self-testing kit so that people will know that not all febrile conditions as a sort of malaria they'll be able to test themselves you know people can walk in there buy it in the street test and they should also empower people the grassroots care provider like the ppmvs the people in the primary health care sector you know to be able to carry out this test it should not be limited to diagnostic centers alone People really want to go to diagnostic centers for tests. Myself, for people that are financially capable, for people that are learned or lettered, okay. But many people, once they started feeling this thing, and you know, the next thing is to go for malaria treatment. And there must be also program in place to tell people to use their malaria drug to the last dose. Malaria kids, apart from blood, you know, there should be innovations. Like I used to know of a kit that is called urine malaria test. You empty. But of a sudden it disappeared. People should be able to test without having to use basic methods of breaking of needles, using of blood and so on and so forth. I so much love that idea of urine malaria test. Please bring it back. Make it available everywhere. Make it accessible. Make it cheap. You know, government should subsidize them or donors, ag agencies, organizations should subsidize, especially in a sub-Saharan. Africa, Nigeria, and, and other countries that malaria are endemic. There should be urine malaria tests, and so on and so forth. The use of insecticide treated net, you know, should be should be scaled up. The promotion of this should scale up. But you know, people have issue about that. When you want to sleep under the certified treated net and your environment is too hot, will it be possible? So you now have to shoot between two evils. Between the devil and the dark blue sea or deep blue sea. Hey, what do we prefer to let me know, let this eat not kill me? So uh, the issue of electricity generation is another area I'm looking at in the war against malaria in Africa. Some countries are doing well. If there is 24 hour power supply, especially at night, people will use their insecticide treated net very well. You don't have issues because they have they have AC, they have their fan standing fan or ceiling fan. That will reduce the heat. But when there is no electricity, <laughs> you put on the, you use your net. I know many people are just hanging it there to decorate their house. That's another area we must look at. The area of chemo prevention. Chemo prevention, that is using of frogs to prevent malaria. Those they we used to know uh, that are praying. Sunday Sunday medicine. Where is our Sunday Sunday medicine? Where, where, where is it? 
is it, Teraprim, Perimetamine? Where is it? See, government must and agencies must do more to bring them back. That people, some people are susceptible to malaria. Once they are treated, they continue to take this chemo prevention. Especially uh, the pregnant women, the IPTPs, the IPTI, and SMC. That is intermittent preventive treatment of pregnant women. IPTP. Intermittent preventive treatment of pregnant women. Then intermittent preventive treatment of events, infants. Okay, and uh, S SMC. That is seasonal malaria chemo prevention. Seasonal malaria chemo prevention for children under six. So, you know the rainy season, you roll out you know, the drugs, give it to the children under six, go to their schools, talk to their parents, go to their religious centers for children under six. So let's scale up this effort for women. Let it be in billboards across cities, rural areas, urban centers, let people know what to do. These are one of the areas I know we can innovate in the reducing the volume of malaria. And the whole idea is to save more lives. Another thing I think about is allow communities, states, countries to develop things that work in their area. It should not be a one side fit all approach. Countries, states should have their malaria program, malaria control program. Like the Lagos state, they should have their own. In Mondo state, people in the urban areas, in the south south region, should have their own malaria control programs. Things that work in their environment. Look at it. We don't stay in Abuja and use the policy and what works in Abuja for people in better state. In a uh, riverine area of Fondo State, in Laje, Esodo, in Igbekebo, in Igbokoda, and so on and so forth. Let people look at their area critically and test and innovate on what works in that area. And once they are, they are making it with government and agencies, organizations should support them to eradicate malaria or reduce the burden of malaria in that region. So not so much to talk about and I will be bringing it on gradually. But the, the fight against malaria is a fight we all must be ready to participate. It's not a governmental issue alone. Organizations, religious institutions, educational institutions, research centers, the, 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 the pharmaceutical world, manufacturers, the distributors, the retailers, everyone that is connected to participate actively. Especially people at the grassroots, the PPMVs, the community health care workers, the primary health care workers, the environmental health technicians, or technologies, to work more assiduously to bring down the level of malaria, the body, to reduce the body of malaria in our country through various means, vector control insecticide treated net, uh, diagnosis, adequate and prompt diagnosis, and um, uh, treatment. Drugs should be developed. More, more drugs outside of artemisin combination. And then uh, for people, they, they, sh they should be also, you know, accessibility to diagnosis, you know, of uh, GCPDD. People that react to like eight aminoquinolone uh, malaria drugs. This, this testing should should be more available and accessible, cost effective, not too expensive. What malaria day alone, a day or two or three days, cannot solve the whole problem of malaria. But it must be a consistent.
concerted effort by all and sundry, government must have the political will also to help individuals, to help organizations, you know, to, to reduce the burden of malaria for real. Our policy should not be office policy. I just see that in the place. Then the, 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 another area of management is the area of data gathering and data collection. That is a major problem we have in Nigeria. Major problem. I said, Trinity uh, Access Initiative, Chai, and other organizations are doing their best. But, okay, look at, for instance, you train, maybe you have a P you have PPNV, we have over 1 million PPNVs, printed and proprietary medicine vendors in Nigeria, and you train a patri, maybe uh, 1,000 or 2,000 out of 1 million people, and you are expecting the the, 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 the data generated from that, from those 1,000, to cover for over 1 million or 2 million uh, P, uh, PPMVs. You know, it doesn't work that way. Let's be sincere with ourselves. In most of all this uh, deceit, what, what is Ministry of Health doing about, about it? Most of these PPMVs have interest. They want to get license. But what are the licensing authority, the PCN dream to license to have more people licensed. You know, you set exam and put their cut off mark at 70%, 60%. Does it does that work in pharmacy school in any healthcare school that you do, they put your uh, cut off mark for exam at 60%, 70%, 80%? 80%. No, it doesn't work that way. Make it easy for people so that you have more hands to train. Train in whatever programs. You want to eradicate malaria, you want to eradicate the diarrhea, you want to eradicate this thing. You cannot be relying on a party, uh, 1,000 or 200 members in Lagos State. You have trained 200 members out of about 10,000 uh, or 50,000 uh, drug vendors in Lagos State. And you think you, are, you will win the war against malaria or any other diseases as such? No! We still have a very long way to go. What are about the community health uh, workers, people that work in the communities, people that are closer to the, to the grassroots, the voluntary health workers? What are we doing about them? What is our program for artisans towards eradicating malaria in Nigeria? What are our programs? Do you have anything? And we want everybody to come to the to to the sectariat, you know. Wear their polo or whatever and sing and dance and after that, but give them two thousand or three thousand. Everybody go back to their uh, to their places. Is that how to reduce malaria? No, we need to be proactive. We need to do something right now. It must be a multi multi pronged approach, not office uh, policy. You have to go out for it. Go to the rural areas, the riverine area. Even in Lagos State, there are so many riverine areas. The place you call urban centers. There are so many rural, rural area in these urban centers. What are we doing to eradicate malaria or to, you know, bring health care to, to to the people in, in those regions? So this is time to do more. It's not enough of pain leave service to the war, you know, against malaria. Let me advise my viewers that once you have any febrile condition, you have high temperature, the first thing to do is to test. A lot of people are fond of rushing to buy paracetamol. Good, at least to reduce uh, the temperature. But in the long run, that may spread disaster. It may spread disaster. To test and know what you are treating. That fever may be as a result of any other condition. Not all fever are uh, malaria. Maybe any other thing. So, test. So, we have talked about it to our government to reduce the cost of testing. Let that be 
self-testing kits available everywhere. Let people go to pharmacy shop, uh, wholesaler shop, and buy self-testing kits. So test then when it is time to take drug, adhere to your doctor's prescription. To your pharmacist's prescription, and you, if you go to uh, amazing vendors, they will advise you appropriately. Follow their advice. I have a video on uh, uh, how effective are uh, anti malaria. Please watch the video and take action. I wish our uh, world happy World Malaria Day Celebration 2022. Please let's innovate, let's harness innovation, innovations, different ideas, new ideas to reduce malaria burden in our environment, in our home, in your community in our state, in Nigeria, and in our world at large, and save life. You know, that guy should not die. That's the idea behind HBHI. HBHI, high body to high impact. You know, the idea is that nobody should die as a result of malaria that is preventable and treatable. That's the whole idea behind HBHI. So let's adopt HBHI in whatever we do. Let's adopt it. Nobody should die because of malaria. Because malaria is preventable and it is treatable. So thank you very much. And don't forget, prevention is better and cheaper than cure. Do whatever you can do to prevent malaria. Destroy their breeding around you. Use insecticide, long-lasting insecticide treatment. Use uh, indoor residual spray. There are so many of them. Use chemo prevention therapy. You prevent prevention for pregnant women, for infants, SMC for children under six, um, vaccines for children under five years. Like you take for five doses and so on and so forth, you use your drug at any combination therapy or any other therapy. Some people don't get okay with at combination therapy. They have to take injection. It's not only that chloroquine that you said is after all, you know, they are monotherapy. Some people still do well with chloroquine with some other injections. Give people more power, you know, especially people at the grassroots to treat. Malaria. Malaria should leave the exclusive list. It should not be exclusive to the people in the secondary or the tertiary health institution alone. Give people access, the grassroots provider, the health workers, the PPMVs, the community pharmacies, and so on and so forth. The access to treat, even the injectables, can treat them doesn't take much and give them power you know, from uh, harassment, from harassment from law enforcement agents. And then when they see the and syringe that become their problem. No, it shouldn't be. You use you need little and syringe to, to withdraw blood, to test uh, malaria rapid diagnostic test. How do you do it without little and syringe? And let that be during malaria test kit available everywhere. Thank you very much. My name is Alex, Alex Kolawali and this is Pencil and Razor Channel. Thank you. See you soon. Your know, it is important. Don't joke with it. Got it. Generously. See you soon.